they're hiding something. We are seeing some green on the screen here. The Dow was up most of the session, up 143 points right now. And we have data that still show a muscular, when it comes to statistics, a muscular economy. And I mean, it's not Arnold Schwarzenegger muscles, but it certainly looks very solid today. There's now an 18.5% chance of a cut in July. And of course, September, we always knew was going to be the first, but now July? That's right. We're five months out, and these people are trying to hold the situation together with tape and lies. And I got a dog at the front door wanting to come in. You want in? Okay, let's go. Come on, I'm in the middle of something. It's right, you know? Let's get down to it. If you're interested in knowing how the government is quietly staving off a wave of foreclosures and how it's going to affect the housing market, that's what we're going to be talking about today. That is, if my dog doesn't interrupt me again. You know, there's a lot of fuzzy math going on these days. From job numbers that come out and miraculously get altered downward weeks later when nobody's looking to those fake inflation statistics. So the numbers really don't add up and the big network news agencies, well, they act more like a PR company for the government than they do actual as a news agency that would report what was really going on. You know, reality? I think inflation has gone slightly up. It was at 9% when I came in, and it's now down around 3%. But the fact is that I think people are just uncertain. And if you're anything like me, you pretty much don't trust anything anymore. But today I'm just gonna arm you with some different information and you can come to your own conclusion. And right now, a variety of things are getting kicked down the road, like mortgage delinquencies. So let's talk about that. We all know what's happening with inflation and as it gets ridiculously high a lot of Americans are, are, are struggling and they are taking their basic living basic necessities and putting them on credit cards and the credit card rates well they are running between 25 and 30 percent which means the average American who's carrying a heavy debt on those credit cards they're paying five six seven hundred dollars a month as a minimum payment on those credit cards it's just like having another car payment and of course once the credit cards get maxed out and you can't get any cash advances off those credit cards well it's only a matter of time before the mortgage delinquencies start to rise a great deal in washington well they don't like the optics on that so right now, as it seems, the government is trying to put a Band-Aid on the situation. Because a bunch of foreclosures happening in the market right now is a bad look for the Biden administration. As if the look could get any worse. So instead of following normal business protocols and doing what most banks do when people become delinquent on mortgages, they've decided to put a pause on foreclosures. Both FHA and VA are pausing mortgage foreclosures, implementing a forbearance program where you temporarily get a lower payment. You know, millions of people have VA and FHA loans. As a matter of fact, 83% of first time home buyers will use an FHA loan in order to buy a home. And while we don't have the exact delinquency numbers, the fact that they're still using a COVID-related program now, after COVID's gone, to stave off foreclosures is kind of worrisome. Mortgage rates, 7% and rising. It's hard to see a rebound in the housing market. Home foreclosures are on the rise here in El Paso County. Tonight's reality check investigation, mortgage forbearance fiasco. Area homeowners are facing foreclosure after mortgage companies promised loan forbearances or a pause in payments during the pandemic. Now don't get me wrong, I'm all for helping people out when they're down. 
but this is a bad business practice. And if you continue to kick the can down the road year after year, it's gonna blow up in your face. It'll just be the timing on it. And something tells me it'll happen after the election. Now, most of these programs do offer you a lower payment for a period of time. Could be 12 months, could be 18 months, they normally put the difference on the back end of the loan, but eventually the payment goes back up to where it was before. And if you can't pay that payment now, I'm not sure what makes you think you're gonna be able to pay the full payment 18 months from now. So in this situation, pretty much all roads lead to foreclosure. It is a slow and painful process. If the bank doesn't foreclose and put it on the market, the seller, may put it on the market prior to it being foreclosed, if they're smart. What they should do is stay in that home and do everything possible to either qualify for a modification, and when you can't, then exit with dignity by letting a real estate agent either sell it as a regular sale with equity or as a short sale because it's underwater. Any way you look at it, this is probably gonna take 18 to 24 months before this all pans out, and it will pan out. And the Biden administration has put another spoon in the pot to make things more interesting. That's right. For those who are not yet delinquent, they want you to be able to pull out all of your equity. That's right. The Biden administration is encouraging Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to offer second mortgages as if taking every penny of equity you have in your home and having nothing left over was a good idea said no one ever what do you think the objective is there i'm scratching my head on this one i have a few ideas so take the equity that you have max it out spend that money or pay off your credit cards turn an unsecured debt into a secured debt that always makes sense spend the money in the economy it'll help the gdp I can tell you by circulating all that cash in our economy certainly will not encourage the Fed to reduce rates. Now you have a first mortgage and a second mortgage. If you weren't able to pay your bills before, high probability you're going to struggle. And now you're losing your house. So what do you think the end game is here? I'm scratching my head kicking the can down the road on the foreclosures and we're now encouraging people who are current to take out second mortgages on their houses. I'd love to know what you think. Now eventually this will blow up and I think cause foreclosures and maybe that is the end game. It's a slow and painful process. In order for this to really pan out, we're looking at homes that would probably hit the market at the end of 2025 or early 2026. And of course, normally, when you have inventory rise at a rapid rate, it does decrease prices. It's the supply and demand component there. But We've had so much pent up demand, so many people sitting on the sidelines. There's so many people that can't afford homes. Throw in a rate cut. And I personally think it will negate any big price drop because we will have people coming out of the woodwork to buy homes. Essentially canceling the effects of rising inventory. You know, if you're someone that's been waiting to buy a home because you're waiting for prices to drop. There's a lot of indicators out there that say it's just not going to happen. Unless, of course, we have a 2008 event, in which case, yeah, housing prices would come down. But an event like that, if that's what you're wishing for, well, you're wishing for a lot of Americans to lose their jobs and lose their homes. It's not a pretty picture. 
You know, currently we still have a housing shortage. And while home prices have leveled off in many areas of the country and in some places declined, you know, five, six, seven percent, nothing huge, but there are areas of the country that are having price declines. Florida, where I live, not the case. Our sales are down. Sales are down about three and a half percent. Prices, however, are up 3.8% as of the first quarter of 2024. I'm in the business and I find this extremely frustrating. Floridians are literally priced out of the market. You are landlocked. You can't go anywhere unless you're willing to pay more, get less, a lot more, pay higher property taxes on a much higher priced home. So most people just stay put. Unless, of course, they leave the area altogether. You know what the old saying is, your home's only worth what people are willing to pay for it? Well, here in Florida, they're willing to pay a bunch. When you stand back and look at the entire picture from that 50-foot view, it's very clear. There are a lot of powerful people in the background pulling strings. Because what is happening right now doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. I think we're just trying to keep appearances right now, if you know what I mean. I mean, I don't know if you really watch the stock market, but we've had an inverted yield curve for over 700 days. Like, what the heck? And now the FDIC has put 63 banks on the watch list for collapse. 63 banks. It's coming. And I am not looking forward to seeing this happen. What's really interesting is the mainstream media barely mention it. And that is by design. They're not putting that list out, even though there are 63 of them. I've, I've tried to find the list because they're afraid there's going to be a bank run, for one. But I think they want this to happen, honestly. I mean, you look at all the things that are happening right now, and I really think they want this to happen. You announced last November, I can show you the press release, where you said that we, we have decided to start, issue, start issuing an inordinately large amount of short-term debt, didn't you? We did, we did make an announcement And about because it. of the inverted yield cl curve, that means that you're going to pay more in interest on short-term debt than, say, 10-year debt. And the only way I can, reason I can figure that y'all are doing that is, is to try to give the economy a sugar high five months before an election. Why else would anybody want to borrow at 5% when you can borrow at 4%? And there's a reason behind it. I mean, the government loves a crisis. You know what they say, never let a good crisis go to waste. Oh, and they're not. When we have a major meltdown, when all the banks start to fail, obviously the dollar is being completely crushed as other countries quit using our dollar, they will take this as an opportunity to usher in central bank digital currency, mark my words. And when they do, you will have no privacy, I will have no privacy, it's game over. If you are unaware of what CBDC is and all the strings that are attached to it, and there are many, I do have a video on it. I'll pop it at the end of this one. You should definitely watch it. It's, it's terrifying. You will have things like limits on how much red meat you can buy, how far you can drive. Probably won't let you buy gas. And I can guarantee you, there'll be some other things that you can't purchase. What's really interesting is the youth of America has no idea how this is going to work. They think it's just like having a credit card or something. And that is not what it is. The government will be holding your money. And the government will be telling you what you can and cannot do with your money. But I'd love to know what you think. Have you heard of it? Do you know what it is? Make a comment below and let me know if you know what it is. At least I'd like to take a temperature and find out if you have heard of it and if you've really looked into what it does. 
and what the plans are for the usage of a central bank digital currency. And I'd like to know, what do you think is going to happen with all these foreclosures? Do you think the prices are going to eventually go down for Americans? Or will they continue to stay high? All I know is when that foreclosure forbearance program comes to a screeching halt, you know what's going to hit the fan. But it is an election year, and this is all about timing. And I can guarantee you the rug is going to get pulled in 2025. Okay, my friends, I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'd love to see you here more often. My name is Lisa. This is Living with Lisa. I'm going to go take care of my dog, Truman, who hates it when I record videos because he doesn't get attention. It's just like a two-year-old. Have a great day. Take care. Oh, on a side note, if there's something that you'd like me to do a video about, you can always put those type of comments below. I'm going to read them, and maybe it'll give me some more ideas for some good video content that you may enjoy. <laughs>